Is BIM different from Lean? I've been talking about BIM. How do BIM and Lean come together? All right. Let me first give you an example, and then let me explain how BIM and Lean came together. Uh, we implemented a last planner process uh, on a project here in Chennai. On the left-hand side of this picture, where you see something called the non-BIM process, we implemented last planner, and we tried to measure the PPC, or planned percentage complete. Okay. Uh, if you look at this figure, you'll see a lot of variability. Uh, PPC goes from 10, 15% to about 70%. Maybe the average is somewhere in the 45 to 50% range. But when we started implementing BIM, all of a sudden you find that the variability, this is now the right side, the BIM process, uh, you find that the variability has come down. It's a much narrower range, somewhere between 50 and 70%, averaging PPC at about 60%, right? So things have certainly improved pre BIM versus post BIM. Okay, plan percentage complete has improved. Why did it improve? How did it improve? What essentially happened is that Lean brought in, of course, a culture of coordination, right? It brought in a culture of people asking each other questions. And BIM provided a very easy graphical platform on which to answer these questions. So if you had a discussion in your last planner meeting saying, what is it that we're going to do this coming week? Immediately, people will say, pull up the BIM model. Let's do a quick 4D simulation of the activities that need to happen this coming week. And let's find out what are the activities, what are the sequencing that we're going to use, what are the preconditions, etc. Can you please zoom in a little bit? Can you blow this part up? So BIM allowed people to have visual conversations, right? So it turns out that BIM and Lean work very well together. BIM enables Lean, uh, allows you to be far more productive and allows you to increase the flow on your production site. So BIM is useful standalone, but BIM plus Lean is a very potent combination and there's enough research that shows this, okay? But it will not just happen by itself, right? If it was so easy, everyone would be implementing BIM and Lean on their construction site, right? Implementing BIM is not automatic, right? There are some challenges, okay? What are some of the challenges? First of all, there is a cost. This is software. So you have to go and buy it. You also need some hardware. Your typical laptop may not run some of these BIM software. So you have to make an investment, right? And sometimes people are a little bit reluctant to spend a lot of money. So that's one barrier. Second, uh, we don't have as many experienced BIM professionals because this is a growing field. Of course, now this is getting better. Most universities now teach some form of uh, Revit or BIM or the other. People are coming out with modeling capabilities, but we don't have as many modelers as we have draftsmen or draftspeople. Right. And therefore, that's a barrier. Right. I want to do BIM, but I can't find the resources to develop my models. OK, the industry is very, very fragmented. Um, right. And so everyone is asking the question, if you force me to use BIM in this project, next project, I'll be working with a completely different client and a completely different contractor, subcontractor, vendor, uh, you know, combination. Uh, will they use BIM? And if they don't, am I just wasting my time learning this thing where I will not use it? anywhere else, right? So the fragmented industry created creates a barrier. People are wondering, okay, you've talked about the benefits. How much money will I make out of using this? Can you give me a return on investment, an ROI, right? Again, we don't have really good answers to this. Although as I've shown, there is a return on investment, right? Generally, there is an aversion to change, right? And so people try to prefer doing what they've continually been doing in the past. And therefore that lends itself to some difficulties in adoption. And we also don't have industry standards with regards to BIM. And when you don't have standards, adoption is tricky. So there are a number of barriers because of which BIM adoption is not trivial, right? It's not something that you just immediately start off on your project, okay? So adoption requires some thinking. Adoption requires a careful process. What process is that, okay? In order to adopt BIM, you've got to do a few things. First of all, like I said, BIM has many uses. Right, there are 25 users, and if you start sort of listing them down, you can even go up to 40, 50 different uses. If you want to achieve all of those uses, you will get nowhere. Okay, it's very important that you start off by setting what's called a set of BIM goals, saying on this project, this is what I want to achieve through BIM. Secondly, you need specialized roles for people to deliver on those goals. Everyone in the construction site is already busy working from uh, you know six or eight in the morning up till 10 p.m. 
If on top of what they are doing, I also ask them to manage BIM, they'll have no time. So I need specific BIM roles, right? That I need to sort of put together. And then I have to have some mechanism that facilitates people to collaborate, uh, right? Either innovative contracts, collaborative procedures like the last planner system, whatever. But I need these three things. I need specific BIM goals. I need specific BIM roles. And I need collaborative procedures that I put together. And this is called IPD or integrated project delivery. Very often, this is put together in what's called a BIM execution plan, which is a document that is created right at the start of the project, right? Where you put in, here are my BIM goals, here are my BIM roles, here, are, here is the BIM process. This person will supply this kind of information to that person in that format with this frequency. Uh, you know, this is how we will, this is the level of detail of uh, the, the models that we will have. This is how we will exchange information. We will use this server, um, right? Here is the supporting infrastructure. These are the kinds of laptops we will buy. These are the kinds of uh, server systems that we will buy. Everything is put into a document. It's not a big document. It can only be about 10 or 15 pages, right? But it systematically says, here are our BIM goals. Here are our BIM roles. Here are our BIM procedures. Uh, right here, are, here is the backbone infrastructure that we're going to use, and everybody signs off on this, right? And once you have sign off on this, then you can essentially start executing the BIM plan, and people start falling in line, and you see the benefits of BIM, right? So BIM execution planning is a very very critical part of uh, the whole BIM adoption process. It's something that you really need to have, okay? And we've seen cases where uh, there's a, an organization was very interested in rolling BIM. They brought in a BIM consultant who quickly said didn't put any uh, BIM uh, you know, plan or whatever. He talked about the 4D BIM where you integrate the schedule. Then he said 5D BIM, let's integrate the cost. Uh, you know, came out with all of these ideas. Uh, did very little by way of setting up those collaborative practices. And turned out that there was very little impact on BIM. And there was a lot of a blame game that was being paid. But on the other hand, we've also seen other cases where infrastructure developers looking to use BIM set specific BIM goals, created uh, you know, curiosity about what BIM can do, created collaborative practices, created a BIM execution plan, which everyone could follow, uh, right? which led to a large amount of what we call messy talk, or my colleague at the University of Washington, Carrie Dosick, coined this term, messy talk, where people had a lot of informal conversations, exchanged ideas, exchanged information, so that the BIM model was always current. And uh, they got some very, very good insights and, and value add. Right. So essentially what this tells us is that BIM is a software, right? But it's really not. Okay. It's more of a process, right? You need to put in place a BIM process and also you have a little bit of technology. Then you actually have this environment where people are coordinating, putting information together. You're using the power of that of the computer to analyze information and make better decisions that help your site become more lean. Okay. So this is essentially what building information modeling is all about and how it can actually have impacts on your sites, right? So ideally, going forward, this is what we'd like to see construction sites look like, right? We'd like designers to design in BIM, right? Open up a BIM interface and come up with your models, with your design, right? Architectural design, structural design, whatever. And before you release the design, you know, detect all the clashes that are there. Right, detect clashes and make sure that we have a clash free design. Right, so you don't have this issue of some column and some beam, whatever, are clashing. Okay, figure all of this out and come up with good for construction drawings. Use these good for construction drawings for tendering, for developing of the or development of the BOQ, so that again the same information is being carried forward and it becomes very quick to develop a bill of quantities. Once you select a contractor, your building information model already tells the contractor what they need to do, what all the activities are. As long as they give you the productivities that they're going to use, you can very easily, excuse me, come up with a schedule. Okay. Um, and once you have a schedule, if you want, you can print out 2D drawings and give it to construction sites. And more importantly, as your sites run and develop, you can monitor using BIM. So it's now very common that in uh, weekly reports, People sort of say, here is what we have uh, as of today. And here is what the BIM model visually shows us we should be at in, say, a week from now. Right? So a week from now, this is what the site should really look at. Okay? So this is our target. Um, and then let us sort of see, this is what our target is. Where are we today? What did we actually achieve? We can actually start using BIM to visually analyze planned versus 
actually. So in other words, we can now migrate our project management completely into the digital platform, right? And make advantage, take advantage of synergies, et cetera, to make our sites far leaner, right? And, and involve people in a way in which the coordination is much better. Okay. And by the way, this is not uh, something that's new in other parts of the world. BIM has been adopted. Uh, there are policies that force the adoption of BIM. It's almost compulsory in many parts of the world, in many sectors. I just put up a flags of a few countries that have really seriously undertaken policy reforms, right? That promote the use of BIM. The US, the UK, Norway, Denmark, Finland, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, et cetera, right? So if you look at this natural trend and progression, sooner or later, you're going to have to see an India flag there as well, right? And once you have an India flag and you're forced to do this, it's important that you understand what BIM is, what are the benefits that BIM can bring, and how do I implement BIM, right? And that was essentially the essence of, of this brief lecture, uh, was to give you an idea of, of those uh, concepts and sort of to tell you that if you do all of this, then naturally your site will be leaner, you will meet your targets better and you will be far more successful in terms of what you do. Okay. So thank you very much again. I hope this was uh, somewhat enlightening and that you had a little bit of an idea of what BIM is, what it can do uh, and how it integrates with Lean. But of course, this is just the beginning. There is a long way to go and uh, you can skill yourselves on BIM uh, to become BIM experts and really take this to the next level on construction sites. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention.